you're live. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, members of staff and to members of our council uh, and everyone watching on Facebook. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof? Seeing none, I have a motion to accept the agenda. I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Williams, seconded by Councillor Massey, that the Council of the Township of North Bungary accepts the agenda of the regular meeting of Council on Monday, May 10th, 2021. Any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion is carried, there are none opposed. Moving on to the adoption of the previous minutes. I have a motion moved by Councillor Massey, Seconded by Councillor Noble that the minutes of the following meeting be adopted as circulated, regular meeting of Council, April 26, 2021. Are there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? The motion is carried, none opposed. Okay, moving on to staff reports. We're moving into uh, Community Services Department. Welcome, Ann. I have a motion moved by Councillor Noble, seconded by Councillor Manley, that Council receives staff report number CS 2021-12, and that Council approves the Community Improvement Plan Project at 33 Main Street, South Maxville, Ontario, as submitted by the property owner, Mark Savard. Program B, Building Improvement Grant, representing a matching grant of 50% up to maximum of 7,500 for two facades visible from the street, Program C, civic address grant representing one civic sign provided by the municipality. Program E, building permit and planning fee program representing a grant equal to 100% of the eligible building permit fees of $130. Program F, tax increment grant. Program G, municipal loan program of $10,000. Total grants, $7,630. Total loan, $10,000. And. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So tonight we have a community improvement plan application for a property located in Maxville on 33 Main Street South. This is a typical worker's cottage and it was built around the 1890s. And as you can see, um, the building presently has a wraparound porch that is in dire need of work. And the application covers that work. The owners are proposing to retain some of the gingerbread work and the lattice work that's there, but they're going to be adding colonial pillars as well as a new railing all around the porch. So the uh, grant qualifies for $750 for two visible facades under program B. And as you can tell from the quotes that were received for that project, the lowest one came in at $19,362.25, of which 50% would be eligible under the community improvement plan, but the maximum amount would be $7,500 for this project. You do have a rendering on page 13 of your package that shows you what the property will look like once the renovations are completed. And on page 14, you do have a list of additional items that the property owner will be working on. We will also be including a civic sign for this property. And that is under our um, program that we have program C for the commercial signage grant. But this one happens to be a civic address grant for the sign that's on included in the report, as well as a permit fee up to $130 that will cover the permit, the building permit for this project. The tax increment grant, this property happens to be eligible for this. And it is also eligible for the municipal loan portion. And council will recall that a property is eligible for a maximum as long as uh, maximum $10,000, as long as it does not exceed the total cost of the project minus the grants. So we did do those calculations and this property is eligible for the whole $10,000. And we are proposing to council to approve this project as presented. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Anne. Are there any questions uh, from the member of council? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. None opposed. Moving on to item uh, A2, listing of non-designated property. I have a motion moved by Councillor Manley, seconded by Councillor Madden, that council receives staff report number CS 2021-13 and that council directs staff to add the property located at 18 Catherine Street East in Maxville, Ontario, K0C1TO 
as recommended by the Alts, Arts, Culture and Heritage Committee to the Municipal Register as a non-designated property of cultural heritage value and or interest. Anne. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So as council knows, the township has a municipal heritage register and we're proposing that this property located at 18 Catherine Street East in Maxville be added to the register. Council will recall that as part of our phase three of our community improvement plan, um, it expanded to include commercial properties in North Gary, as well as any property that is included on the municipal register as a listed property. So that's a non-designated property. Uh, the property owner filled the appropriate forms and the Arts, Culture, Heritage Committee reviewed the request for listing and felt that this property more than qualified for this project. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Are there any questions on this motion? It's quiet tonight. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion. Motion is carried. None opposed. Thank you. Uh, review of guidelines of for 2022 Community Grants Program. I have a motion moved by Councillor Madden, seconded by Councillor Wensink, that Council receive staff report number CS 2021-14 and that Council approves the guidelines for the 2022 Community Grants Program. Anne. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the Community Grants Program fall under the Arts, Culture and Heritage Committee. It's up there purview. And yearly, we do a review of the guidelines to ensure that we're meeting the um, requirements of the committee and of council. So this year we went through this exercise again, and other than a few minor housekeeping items, like bringing back the uh, funding deadline or the submission deadline to October 31st, if uh, council recalls last year, we actually postponed um, the, uh, the deadline to February to give groups a time to manage their or their events due to COVID. So we actually brought it back to October 31st. We're happy to have more of a normal year moving forward and also just changing an email address for the economic development department. So those are basically the only revisions we did. And we propose to do a more in-depth revision of the program for 2023 once we have a little bit more normalcy due to COVID uh, 19, we felt that this was not uh, the appropriate time to go ahead and change either eligibility or funding criteria of this program. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments from members of the of council? So uh, I, I know that you did mention it, but uh, I am a little disappointed that we didn't uh, uh, put a time limit on the, the amount of years that you can apply in a row. Uh, I think it seems to be the same people that keep getting the money every year. And uh, I, I would really like to see it expanded so it's easier for other groups to, to submit. Uh, uh, Councillor Manley, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We, we did have that discussion at, uh, at the committee level um, and uh, basically decided that we thought that it was probably not the, not the maybe the appropriate time. Um, <laughs> We, we look, when we look back at over the years at the different organizations that have benefited from the community grants, last year was, was really the only year um, where we had the same people apply that had applied the previous year. I think, is that correct, Anne, in saying that? So similarly, these were, a lot of these were flipped programs because they weren't able to occur due to COVID-19. Right, right. Right, so I, we just... No, continue. Go ahead. We we just felt that maybe maybe we we let it go for this year, um, but definitely we do want to review um, and and see what uh, um, what comes in. We we could possibly end up with with the same groups again this year or whatever because of because of COVID. Um, that's a possibility. But the other thing that 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 uh, um, was brought up at the meeting was the fact that. Are there other groups out there that are looking for funding? But, but um, I, because it's I, always. But if that's your it's question, always been over. if that's your question, then perhaps we're overfunding the 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 program. Uh, if if uh, you know, and you can look, and I, I'm not going to call out certain organizations, but certain organizations have been on there for five, six, seven years, yeah. and we we should not be the basis of funding 
for these events. They should they should at some point be able to take off on their own. And uh, I don't and, and I, I I do agree. It's a it's a difficult time during COVID, and and uh, I'm fine with leaving it for this year. But uh, we've we've got to take a serious look at it. You know, like you're saying, maybe there aren't other groups out there. But again, then if we uh, if that's the case, then maybe we should putting that money into some other uh, community uh, funding stream. So anyways, that's just, that's just my opinion. Uh, just anybody else have anything else they'd like to add to the conversation? Councillor Madden? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We, uh, as Councillor Manley said, we did have the, the discussion at the committee level. And um, I think really the, the gist of it in, in terms of deciding to leave it for now is the hopes that we can help as many groups as possible come out of this well and really look at that as a baseline of who it is that we're funding all the time, I guess based on historical when we get new applications this year. Um, one of the suggestions I made was maybe we look at a, you know, groups are allowed to access it three out of five years or two out of five years or whatever it becomes. Um, but yeah, the gist is it's, it's a, a very unfortunate time to try and, uh, I guess, make it tougher for any kind of community funding. So next year will be the year we're gonna look at this and maybe we, the message goes out when the applications come in this year that you know, we're gonna look at who it is that's coming back for this all the time. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments? So Mr. Mayor, if I may, um, one, one of the comments that had been voiced by council in the past was to ensure that uh, similar events weren't being funded for the same organization. And that was one of the eligibility criteria that had been modified, if I recall well, two years ago. And uh, we did do it for one year, then COVID hit. And of course, a lot of the organizations weren't able to move forward with their projects, which is one of the reasons that we are seeing very, very similar projects this year because those weren't. But I, I do want to ensure, um, uh, reassure council that their comments had been taken to heart in the past and the guidelines had been modified by the Arts, Culture and Heritage Committee duly to reflect that requested change. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ann. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I am. Um, <clears throat> well, that, that's what I was going to outline what, uh, what Ann just did. Um, and I, I think that was a good change that was made uh, previously um, because it, you know, we do need to look at uh, as you pointed out, Mr. Mayor, the issue of sustainability that these organizations need to be planning for the future and, and, and becoming able to, to manage these projects on their own. Um, and, and I do believe that cracking down on funding the same events by the same organization year after year after year simply can't happen. But we are gonna have to, I think, have a, a bit of a further discussion if, if an organization comes up with a, uh, you know, even if they've been, let's say previously funded and they come up with a brand new initiative, that's very, you know, creative and is going to, I don't know, really do, you know, fantastic things in the township. You know, how do, you, how do, how do we go about supporting an initiative like that uh, without shutting them out just because they've been funded in the, in the past? So I, I think we'll have to have a little more discussion about it, but I, I think um, you know we're, we're we're on the right track anyway. Okay, thank you. And uh, I mean, I do appreciate the work of the committee. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I just I want to see more groups uh, try to access the program. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, we have a motion to vote on. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. There are none opposed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Moving on to planning, building, and bylaw enforcement department. Uh, number one, zoning bylaw amendment number Z07 2021. I have a motion moved by Councillor Wensing, seconded by Deputy Mayor Williams, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry adopt zoning bylaw number Z07 2021, and that bylaw Z07 2021 be read a first, second, and third time, enacted in open council this 10th day of May 2021. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to uh, refresh council memory, I will uh, just do a quick presentation. Don't worry, I will not uh, redo the whole thing. Just a few slides just to uh, refresh your memory. Here we go. All right, so that one, uh, 
So Z07 2021, everybody can see that? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this one was just a, uh, the owners were Antonio and Julia yeah, Francisco. It was the lot located at the end of Florence Street in Glen Robertson. Uh, so the purpose of the zoning amendment, so you see this property here. So as you recall, the purpose of the zoning amendment is simply to remove the holding provision from uh, the property so the owners can uh, can proceed and uh, apply for a building permit for a single, uh, single family dwelling unit. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Jacob. Are there any questions on this uh, zoning bylaw amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? The motion is carried, none opposed. Thank you. Moving on to zoning bylaw amendment number Z08-2021, motion moved by Deputy Mayor Williams, seconded by Councillor Massey, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry adopt zoning bylaw number Z08-2021 and that bylaw Z08-2021 be read a first, second and third time and enacted in open council this 10th day of May, 2021. Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So again, uh, same thing. I will just share my screen just to show you. All right, that one, uh, bylaw 08, 2021. Uh, the owners were uh, Monsieur Doug Lee and Joy Stevens. Uh, the property was located on County Road 45. Uh, the purpose, so right here, so as you can see, just south of Alexandria, the purpose of the application was just to rezone uh, basically the left hand side or the west side of the property, uh, rezone to a special exception to allow for a, a secondary dwelling unit to be built on the same property as there's already a single family dwelling on that property. So, yep, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments from members of council? Deputy Mayor Williams. Um, I know this is the second time this comes in front of us. So, uh, but I, I was just wondering, because uh, you said that a, a, a second driveway won't be required and that uh, if they want to uh, ever sell the property, what, what, what will they have to do again? I'm sorry, I don't remember. Uh, well, if they would technically have a, a few options, um, what we tell people when they apply for that is that most of the time they would have to sell the property as is. So they would have to sell the property with more than one dwelling on the same property. Uh, should they decide to do a severance on the property uh, to split the two dwellings, uh, Again, I did not study the case. It may be an option, but if they would decide to do that, they would probably have to do some kind of a minor variance of some kind, or like I'm, I'm, I didn't study the whole thing, but property like frontage and lot area, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if they want to have a separate driveway for the secondary home that for the secondary lot, sorry, that they would create, they would have to apply for an entrance uh, or they could use the same entrance as like some people in the township, there's two addresses on the same driveway where there's a shared driveway. This would have to be registered on title. It would be a, it would be a condition on the severance basically. So yeah, it, it, I'm not saying it cannot be done. It, it can be done, but uh, for, for now, having spoken with uh, Monsieur Dougilly multiple times, the, the purpose behind that is to have uh, family members uh, coming to live with them on the property. And this will probably become more and more popular, by the way, as the province is encouraging that kind of stuff, because uh, like the, the, sorry, I just have old folks home. I don't want to offend everybody, but the old people home there, they're getting filled and they encourage people to have their parents to come and live with them. So I have many questions regarding that and accessory apartments and et cetera. So this will probably become more and more popular. Okay, uh, thank you, Jacob. I, the reason I asked the question is because if it's going to become more popular, we just don't want to be making decisions today that then, you know, you know, 15, 20 years down the road end up being problematic. For example, we know that that, that property can be severed. Does it, uh, uh, it, can any property be severed regardless of where the secondary uh, house is built? It, it would depend. In this case, there's part of the property that's zone rural and part that's zone ag. 
So if you if you do that in an agricultural property, you would not well again you would probably not be able to do that as easily because it's ag. So you can't do severances of, of residential properties in ag. Uh, if the property is owned entirely rural, uh, it would definitely be an option for sure. This property here, there's there's the two zoning cuts kind of in the middle of the property. So uh, I could come back with you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, with a more definite answer, but I, I really did not, uh, like, I, I really did not apply those options because the, the, the it, it, like, it was not requested, and for now, it's definitely not the plan for sure, so. Yeah, well, I, I you know, I, I don't really want to, uh, to stop this, this in its tracks, um, for sure, because I know the applicant is, is, is waiting on this. Uh, I just think that we, we need to, in the future, you know, have our ducks in order so that we know that we're not making a planning decision today that could be problematic in the, in the future. Those people aren't always going to live there, right? You know, I, I what my, my, my question to you, Deputy Mayor, would be, what would be the issue with that? I, I, I don't know. That, that's the so thing. The uh, lot, if the lot is big enough to sever in the future, uh, they would have to have their own septic system. Uh, you know, there, there's, that's why we have planning rules, I guess, is um, and I mean, if the lot was big enough and that was something that was brought forward in the future and was allowable, then I, mean, I, I don't see a, a real issue with I, it, but. I, I'm, I'm just asking the question. That's all I'm doing. Go ahead, uh, Jacob. Yes, if I can just add, uh, Mr. Mayor and Deputy Mayor, the, that the, in, in our zoning bylaw, in like, especially well, for farmers, uh, this this special rule have existed since the beginning, since the creation of that zoning bylaw. Well, where all farmers are allowed to have a secondary dwelling on their on their farms when it's for member of the family or someone working on the farm. And it's well, I've I've worked for a few townships and I I did not see see an issue come out of that as a, like big issues anyway come out of that uh, since since that time so it, it's not something new it's just in yes in this case it's just for another a secondary dwelling on the same property that's why we're doing this bylaw but there are other properties that have two house on the same property in the township definitely thank you uh councillor manley thank you mr mayor so jacob just to clarify then so in an agricultural zone, you can have two two houses on on an ag property. Is that correct? Is that what you're saying? For for a farm, when you're farming, when you have an intensive livestock facility, um, you're allowed to build a secondary home. Let's say there's there's two brothers who own the farm. Well, both brothers are allowed to have a house on that same property. Or if it's for a, a worker or somebody else like working on the farm. Uh, the, the owner of the farm is allowed to build another house on that same lot, on that same property, for either a member of the family or a worker. Yes, they are allowed to do that. Yeah. Okay, so if it was just a, uh, let's say somebody was a farm, was, has a, as an, it's an ag, ag land or whatever, and they rent their land out to, to uh, cash croppers or whatever, um, and somebody that wants to move back from the family to live on that land, is that different then? Is that yeah, it would be different. Yeah, it, it has to be. I, I don't have the, the right, like sorry. the plan yet. I have this only no, it, you, you need to be like, it needs to be either an owner of an intensive livestock facility okay. or the house okay. needs to be built for a worker who works okay. at that intensive livestock facility. So it's really for, for actual, I guess, for dairy farmers mostly who have right. like more than one owners or who have lots of workers, they're allowed to do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, so that. just, yeah, just like if you have a huge property and it's zone ag and it's all fields that you're renting out or, or you're, or it's forest for some reason, like it's bush, you're not allowed to just build two houses on that same property. You have to have okay. like a, an actual operation for the two houses to be okay. built. On all right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion. Motion is carried. Thank you. Moving on to site plan agreement development. Motion moved by Councillor Massey, seconded by Councillor Noble, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry adopt site plan agreement bylaw 17 2021, and that bylaw 17 2021 be read a first, second, and third time, and it act in, in open council this 10th day of May 2021. Jacob. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will uh, share this again. Well. Okay, yes. So yeah, uh, so bylaw 17, 20 21 is for the Glengarry Animal Hospital. Uh, the owners are uh, HG Vet Lab Corp, Jennifer Ellis. Uh, they're located in Hawkesbury, but they're going to own the property uh, located on West Boundary Road in Alexandria. Uh, so that's just, I just put that little image there where uh, it shows what the animal hospital will look like and just a quick site plan here. Uh, so nothing has changed since our last meeting. Uh, it's all there. We're all, uh, we're all moving forward. And uh, yeah, there's there's nothing uh, nothing to add. No complaints. No, we we didn't receive any bad feedback on that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Jacob. Any questions or comments from members of council? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion. Motion is carried. Okay, moving on to uh, B four site plan agreement to bylaw. 16 2021 have a motion moved by councillor noble seconded by councillor manley that the council of the township of north glengarry adopt site plan agreement bylaw 16-2021 and that bylaw 16-2021 be read a first second and third time and enacted in open council this 10th day of may 2021 jacob thank you mr mayor uh all right i will share this again All right, so uh, this site plan 16-2021 is for, the owner is uh, Mr. Darren Nelson. Uh, it's located uh, 18880 Kenyon Concession Road 2 in Apple Hill. Uh, so here the zoning was changed to rural special exception to allow for that site plan. So it's the, uh, so you can see here a quick site plan. So Mr. Nelson already lives on the property and he's proposing to build a new building for uh, for events, so it's going to be more of an event venue property now. Uh, we uh, discussed uh, last week all the like parking and stuff like that. Again, here uh, nothing has changed; everything is exactly as it was, and we did not receive any uh, any uh, bad feedback. Sorry, bad feedback for this application. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Jacob. Any questions from members of council? Seeing none. Just, uh, two good news stories that are going to be going through. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you. And number five, ownership of Park McNaughton Road Allowance. I have a motion moved by Councillor Manley, seconded by Councillor Madden, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry receive staff report number BP 2021 16 to create a bylaw for the dedication of a parcel as municipal road allowance and that bylaw number 19-2021 be read a first, second and third time and enacted in the open council this 10th day of May, 2021. Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so I will share this again. That's a, that's a new one. So it'll be a little bit more interesting, I guess. Uh, where did I have that? There you go. You see, you don't see that, huh? No. No. Oh. Good now. Yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, here, uh, what we have here. So just uh, that's the township's map. Uh, the property we're talking about is located uh, at the at, completely at the northeast corner of the property in Dalkeet. So it's actually the last property before uh, the boundary with East Oxbury Township. Okay, so it's way up there. So as you can see here, the, the red line here is, is the boundary. So that's a road. Uh, down here, uh, it is called, uh, sorry, I forget the name, of course. Sabourin. Come, come, sorry, what again? Sabourin. Sabourin, c'est ça, exactement. Yeah, so yeah, at this end here is Sabourin Street and it's turning here, but the road allowance continues straight right down to the 417. And this is actually the, the boundary of the township. So the property we're talking about is this one here on uh, technically on McNaughton Road and on Sabourin Street. So they go from so road, sorry, they go from road to road. Um, 
here, so what happened, I'll show with the pin number. So as you can see here, all the box in blue is all in one pin number. So what happened here is that you had multiple uh, roll numbers, as you can see in my previous slide here. So you had one, two, and three roll numbers that were all merged together combined on the same pin number. So it was really never an issue because it's the same owner, uh, uh, Sunset, uh, Sunset Meadow. So now, uh, because it's been all merged together, uh, you had the same row number here and here. So as you can see in, uh, in the red lines here, in the red lots, it's, it's two different parcels. It looks like two different parcels. But when it was all merged together, they took all three row numbers and they merged it all together. So it became this here. So what happened is that, as you can see here, McNaughton Road. So that section of McNaughton Road here was actually merged with the three roll numbers. It was, it was merged with the with Sunset Meadows property, basically. So in other words, it's it's like saying that they were now the, the owners of the road allowance. So what is happening now is that Sunset Meadows, they went to their lawyers and they want to sell that piece here. So there's a 12.79 acres of land here. So this is McNaughton Road, okay? So they want to sell this little piece of land but the lawyers, they use PIN numbers. So when they, you, when they punched in the PIN number, they realized that this has been merged with the same properties, with the same road numbers, along with that road allowance. So along with our road allowance. So now what they want to do is they want to deed that section of McNaughton Road here. So only this little portion here, they want to deed it back to the township. So they want us to become the, the owners again of that road allowance. So we already, if you, if I just go back here, so we already, we're already the owner of the road allowance right down to this corner here. So it's only at this row number that this road allowance here was merged with the two properties. So what they're proposing is that they want the township to own the road back again. Uh, so yeah, that's the, the pin number. So as you can see here, I don't know, I hope you can see it, but there, there, there's two green lines here. That means that the road allowance still exists and we still own it. So basically it's just that section here that we don't own anymore. So they did the survey, uh, they surveyed this road allowance here, they did the deed of land. So now they just want council to pass a bylaw in order to be able to, to, to consider this or, or to deem this section here, this new, this new part of a roll number, they want it, they want to be, to be well, they want this to be deemed a, a road allowance owned by the township. So that's what's happening here. Uh, I, I went for a little tour and this is what it looks like today, this afternoon. Uh, so on uh, Sabourin, uh, Sabourin Road, uh, it looks like some gravel was added. Uh, it's, it's used by the farmers around, so mostly Sunset Meadow. Uh, it's used by them to access their fields. As you can see, there's been some, uh, some clear cutting and whatnot. So sorry, this is a view. I'm, I'm standing on the actual township's boundary now and I'm looking west. So this is the section that we do not own anymore. And on my next picture here, the road you see, so I'm actually looking the other way around. So I'm standing west and I'm looking east at the road allowance. And this is the section of McNaughton Road that we don't own. So as you can see, it, it is not maintained. I checked with uh, Public Works. Uh, I have another picture also. It's not maintained year round. This is from farther back uh, going west, but I'm still looking east. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, and as you can see here, the last house on McNaughton Road, uh, 22275, is actually where, so that little yellow thing that you see here is the sign that says that, uh, that's the end of the, uh, of the improve of the maintained road. So all past that is just, a, it's an unmaintained road allowance, basically. So the plow, they turn here and they go back. So they do not maintain that year round. It's solely used by farmers in the summertime. Uh, right now they're, they're doing clear cutting down there. But uh, anyway, they want, what they're proposing to deed back to us is actually 40 feet wide. Uh, there's no road widening done at this point because uh, it's, we're just simply using the same uh, old road allowance that existed before. So we're just changing the deed. We're not creating any, well, we're, we're not applying for a consent or a severance. Although the important thing to know here is that the reason why they want to do that, the reason 
while this came up is when they realized that this is all the same pin number here. So as you can see in this slide here, if the township become the owners of this road allowance here, it automatically means that this parcel here becomes a, a lot by itself. So it creates a natural severance for this property here. So you don't need to apply for a consent for this, for this consent here because it's a natural severance. So this here would become a new property. So they want to sell only that 12.8 acres. Um, so by doing that, it creates the lot automatically. So that's the whole purpose behind that. But uh, again, they want to deed the road allowance back to us as it, as it should be technically. So uh, yeah, I think uh, that's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Massey. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, being uh, a lot that they could be severed and uh, maybe built on uh, Jacob, do, do we not have the responsibility to upgrade the road uh, for emergency services and stuff like that? Like, is there going to be an expense to the township for this or? At, at, at this point, there has been no discussion to develop the land. Uh, it's just they want us to separate the parcel. I, I didn't really ask the question, but uh, when I spoke with the lawyer, uh, I can guarantee you it was assumed that there's no, like there's not a house going there or, so, or whatever, because technically the, the, the property has no frontage on a maintained public road. So they will not be able to build a house there until this is being done. And before this happens, um, public works would most likely come back to council to, to, to do the road. So there's stuff to be done before with the road, before this property could be developed, especially in a single family dwelling. So either it's going to be merged to an adjacent property or they just want to keep it as a separate lot for future purposes, basically. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, just, just to follow up, Jacob, uh, is this uh, going to remain uh, like a green road or like an unimproved road? For now, yeah, I discussed with Mike, and uh, well, I, I discussed with Mike. I, I, I basically explained to Mike that the road maintenance uh, category or level of road, nothing of that changes at all. It, it okay. still remains an unimproved, unmaintained road allowance. We're okay. basically just taking ownership of the road allowance. That's it. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments from members of council? Did you have your hand up, uh, Brenda? No? Oh, sorry. Okay, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, thank you. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. I have a motion moved by Councillor Wensing, seconded by Councillor Massey, that the Council of the Township of North Hungary receives the items from the consent agenda for information purposes only. Are there any questions on the consent agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. And uh, that will conclude our business, <laughs> public business. Our next uh, regular public meeting of council will be Tuesday, May 25th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. And uh, we will be going in camera to discuss uh, personal matters that deal about an identifiable individual. So thank you everyone. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Council. I, I just wanted to, to mention that it's nursing week. So happy nursing week. And, and thank you to all the caregivers who are still out there looking after COVID patients. Thought we yep. should mention that. Yep, thank you. And also uh, like to introduce, uh, I'm not gonna put her on the spot, I hope, but I'd like to introduce Tara Clayton, our new public works manager who is on the uh, Zoom call tonight. So welcome, Tara, and uh, look forward to uh, working with you. And uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing you around pretty soon. Anything further from members of council? All right, so we will be going in camera. So thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Thank you. <laughs>